Okay, we're going to start uh, on section 9.1. So um, this section is going to be about uh, s basically solving some differential equations that are separable is the main focus. So first we're going to write down a couple lists here. We're going to write down uh, differential equations, which we'll abbreviate D-I-F-F-E-Q for differential equation. And each differential equation has kind of a form of a general uh, solution. So a differential equation is an equation that involves a derivative. So we could say like a differential equation could be like y prime equals two times, or negative two times y. We could say it's, a, you know, we could say dy dt. So the derivative of y with respect to t equals just t itself. Or we could have y double prime plus uh, y equals zero. And each of these three forms, they have a general solution that we can write down over here. So this uh, y prime equals negative 2y. Uh, basically, a function y that would satisfy this equation would have the form y equals some constant times e to the negative 2x. And if you have a function whose dy dt just was t, the function that came from uh, a y value that would equal one half t squared plus c. That would be a function that, if you took its if you took its derivative, would give you back just t. And for this y double prime plus y equals zero, um, a function y equals a sine of x uh, plus b cosine of x. Uh, this right here is a y value that would solve this equation. So just to kind of see, uh, let's verify, let's verify that y equals a sine of x plus b cosine of x. Let's verify that that is a general solution. Oops, sorry, we would need, uh, let's say is a general solution. Uh, to y double prime plus y equals zero. So basically, to verify this, what we're going to have to do is we say, okay, we know y is equal to a sine of x plus b cosine of x. We need to figure out what the second derivative is so we can write the second derivative down, add to it the first derivative, and then see what happens when we do that. So if y is that, then y prime, let's see, derivative of sine is cosine. Derivative of cosine is negative sine. And then if we do the second derivative, we would get derivative of a sine, whoops, derivative of sine is cosine, and I just wrote sine again. So derivative of sine is supposed to be cosine of x. And then derivative of cosine is negative sine. I'm just putting the negative out in front of the constant a. And the derivative of sine here is cosine, so we have negative b out there, and then we have cosine of x. So the claim is y double prime plus y should equal 0 if we started if this function here really is a general solution, then this function here, when we plug it in for y double prime plus y, that is your y should make this equation true. So y double prime is negative a sine of x minus b uh, cosine of x. That's the second derivative. We add to it the first, uh, original function y, which is a sine of x plus b cosine of x. And that's y double prime uh, plus y. If we just simplify this down, negative a sine of x cancels with positive a sine of x. Negative b cosine of x cancels with positive b cosine of x. And this whole thing is put just equal to zero. It all cancels out. And you say, well, the claim was that we should equal zero, and it does. So at this point, we can say, OK, we verified that for that particular general solution, uh, when we use this as the starting y value, 
it will satisfy that equation. And the same will hold for these other two general solutions. If I took uh, the derivative here of this function and I compared it to negative two times this function, those would match up and be the same thing. And down here, if I took the derivative of this, I would just get t back. So that's what a general solution means for a differential equation. A general solution is a function that when you uh, substitute the function in along with whatever derivatives the differential equation has you take, it makes the equation true. And we could see here for this, when we substituted in uh, this y value for y double prime, and we substituted it in for y itself, uh, everything canceled out and we just got zero back, so that verified that the equation was true. Um, so next we got some vocabulary terms for differential equations. Um, we get this thing called uh, order. Um, so the order of a differential equation, say the order of a differential equation, differential equation uh, is the highest derivative appearing in the equation. We also get this idea of, is the function linear? So for it to be linear, what you need is uh, the differential equation has form. You can have some x stuff multiplied to the nth derivative of y plus another function that depends on x multiplied to the n minus one derivative of i, plus so forth and so on, till you get down to the a one, uh, so this function that depends on x times y prime, plus the final function that depends on x times y, and that'll equal some other function that depends on x. So basically, um, thing that cause issues to be linear if you have uh, any functions applied to y or its derivatives uh, for example like if we had uh, y prime cubed, that would be bad. Or if we had, say, tangent of y double prime, that would cause an issue. Or if we had square root of uh, y, you know, y prime, that would cause an issue. So if you have any functions that apply to the uh, deriv to the the y value or its derivatives, that causes issues. Also, if you have terms uh, with more than one. y derivative in it, like if we had y double prime times y triple prime, so for example, or we had say like y times y prime or anything like that where you have instead of just x stuff times y, if you have y stuff times other y stuff that causes, uh, that can cause issues for things to be linear. So uh, what we're going to look at here is uh, we're just going to write down a couple differential equations. So we have uh, x squared y prime plus e to the x y equals 4. We want to list the order and we want to list is it linear or nonlinear. So we have a uh, y prime here so this is a first order that's the highest derivative we have. Since y prime is by itself, it's just multiplied by stuff with x. y here is multiplied by stuff with x, and we get that equals 4. This is linear. This is okay. There's no uh, functions applied to the derivatives. We have no like y prime y terms. It's x stuff times y, uh, x stuff times y prime. 
So here we have x y prime squared equals y plus x. Uh, y prime is the highest derivative, so this is still first order. Uh, this one is going to be nonlinear. And the issue is the y prime squared. So that's, that's one of these where we have, like, you know, our example is y prime cubed. We have a function basically applied to y prime that's going to cause this to not be linear. Um, another example, suppose we had y double prime equaled sine of x, and then that's times y. This would be a second order uh, because of the double prime. And since y double prime doesn't have anything multiplied to it, and the y only has x stuff multiplied to it, this is okay. This is linear. The final one would be y triple prime equals x times sine of y. So the y triple prime makes this third order. And then this one's going to be nonlinear. And the issue uh, with this one is the sine function applied to y. OK, so we're going to stop there for part one. We'll uh, get into part two, which has some of the examples and the separation of variables. Uh, part one here was just kind of some vocab terms. So we'll pause here for a minute.